Hello everyone, my name is Matt Adams. I'm the president of the Visual Arts Alliance, bringing you this month's educational program. The Visual Arts Alliance was founded in 1981 as an all volunteer arts nonprofit organization that seeks to provide education and exhibition opportunities for Houston area artists and collectors. We do this through a series of activities, uh, most of which have been able to transfer into what I call Corona World. Uh, so although we're not doing things in person for the foreseeable future, we are able to keep up with activities online. Uh, please follow us on Facebook and on our website at visualartsalliance.org. So with that said, this month's program uh, is uh, being brought to you by our friend Jason Dibley at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. Uh, he's in his office, I'm at home, and I'm going to guess everyone else is at home. So, Jason, we really appreciate you taking time uh, out of your day uh, to bring us uh, this presentation. Uh, so, those of you who don't, um, don't know what you're about to get into, I think that this is an interesting change for us. Uh, as, as an organization, we go uh, to different galleries, we go to museums, we go to artist studios, uh, things that tend towards a fine art, a traditional fine art um, subject matter. Well, here we have an interesting overlap of uh, fine art and documentary photography. And I think this is a very, very interesting opportunity for us. And so I wanted to ask Jason, uh, kind of in an introdu introductory way, um, how is it that the Museum of Fine Arts Houston has images of protests, not just fine art imagery. Thanks, thanks, Matt. Um, I'd say that you know the museum collects photography uh, in an encyclopedic way, um, and so looking at from the you know the genesis of photography to the present day, collecting all different types of, of lens or lensless made images. Um, and because of, I think, the cultural significance of a lot of these protest pictures, um, that sort of, it falls under the general collecting strategy for the museum and uh, certainly um, the curatorial uh, staff here in the photography department are interested in, in those sorts of things um, and not just sort of in the, in the world of um, photography meant as, um, you know, what, what you're, referring to is like, you know, art, art photography or, or some sort of expressive um, work in that way. That's interesting. And so you, there's a collection of images in the museum that is 34,000. How many photographic images are there now? So the photography department, um, the collection objects within the photography department um, is a little over 34,000 objects. Uh, the museum's total collection is uh, is a little is around 71,000 objects, and a little more, I guess. And so, um, between the departments of photography and prints and drawings, it, you know, it's it's about three fifths of the collection total. Wow, wow, that's that's pretty incredible. That's good for everyone to know. I think that's really good for everyone to know. Um, so, Jason, when we talked about this program, so you had this idea. This was something that you wanted to do for us, uh, which, of course, is fantastic. Thank you. Uh, but what you told me at that time, it was uh, kind of a personal uh, journey or a personal quest that you put yourself on. Uh, so could you share with everyone your take on really how you developed um, tonight's program? Well, um, I mean, I think that there are, I find the protest images in the collection here to be of like really powerful significance and, and increasingly sometimes problematic too. Um, uh, there was a book uh, that was published a few years ago that was, um, that was looking at images of, um, of atrocities and um, things, and there were these like there were images that weren't reproduced in the book. I mean, it was a it was a book that was discussing the sort of problem of those type of images. And I think sometimes when I look at some of these protest images, I, I 
find that there are problems viewing them. And um, I've sort of edited the selection that I made tonight. I sort of pulled some punches, so to speak, as far as uh, the, the type of material that you'll see. Um, so, but I think my interest was that they were significant in um, in different ways. Um, when, when I start the presentation, go into sort of like definition section and and what 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 that means. What what does like protest mean, um, and how is that important to individuals that are involved? Um, and on the other side of that, how how do you do justice to um, to a protest through images, through image making? Um, and I, I don't know that I have. I don't know that there's a, an answer for that. There are a lot of flaws sometimes in making those kind of pictures and what they can be used for. Um, so I don't know. That's that's sort of my that's my quick quick take on things. Um, I find them a lot of the pictures really. It's a cliche to say, but arresting and really um, jarring sometimes, and, um, and getting into what the reason why that photograph does that to you know creates the sort of feelings. I guess are things that I'm interested in. Yeah, that, that's uh, uh, outstanding. That you're in a you're in a world of, of fine art, but just as a human being, you're sensitive to what you know, is involved with, you know, politics and protests, and you're in a position that those two interests can intersect. It's, I think, I think it's, it's, it's fascinating. Uh, so thank sure. you for that, that, that background. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, as, a, as an institution and as, um, you know, somebody that's, that's sort of one of the, my sole purposes at work is to, is to give access to those things through the study center um, and it's something that you know the public has has access to um, via emailing and um, you know sending an inquiry and finding out you know what's in the collection and how to access it and all those sorts of things so so when corona world is done we can come visit you back in the print room sure whenever that is going to be Okay, I think at this point, I'm kind of being taken off, and Jason, you're going to be in charge from now on, right? Okay, okay, yeah, I can go do that. Um. Uh, so, uh, as we go on, I hope that everyone sees that uh, you can raise your hand. Um, you can, uh, I might prefer to type questions in the chat box, just as Jason goes on at the end, if there are any questions in the chat box. Uh, we'll use that tool. I think that'll that'll be helpful because this is interactive for those of you who are watching live. And I'm a full believer if you have a question, someone else has the same question. So please ask away within the chat box, and uh, we'll see you when Jason's done. All right. Thanks, Matt. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and start this. Um, so, uh, just to start, um, ordinarily, um, you all would be visiting uh, the study center here at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston and looking at photographs in real life. Um, so, in lieu of that, I have a couple of JPEGs to show you. Um, so, uh, starting in May of last year, uh, there were um, a series of renovations that were done to the study center here to accommodate um, the Manfred Hiding Book Collection, which is part of the Hirsch Library, um, and as well um, to the renaming of the study center to the Ann Wilkes Tucker Photography Study Center. Generous gift of um, Joan and Stanford Alexander, uh, longtime patrons of the photography department here. So this is that outside hallway actually <clears throat> going over to the study center. 
Thanks. Thanks for joining virtually. Uh, so the first image, well, first, let's start with a definition um, of protest being um, usually organized public demonstration of disapproval. So the first part of the presentation, we want to sort of look at um, non-civil rights related images, and the last half will be uh, centered on um, photographs of the civil rights movement in the United States. Uh, so this first photograph, uh, photographed by Arthur Siegel, um, right of assembly from 1939, um, depicting a, a group of individuals um, protesting uh, with the Chrysler United Auto Workers Union. So um, this photograph was made after Arthur Siegel had returned to Detroit after a year. Um, at what was then called the New Bauhaus, which was started by Laszlo Maholi Naj in the 30s. Um, Siegel was there for a year taking classes, and then the school went into financial uh, insolvent, insolvency. And so um, Siegel returned back to Detroit. Um, so this photograph was made in Detroit. And I always think about this photograph and associate it with, with Bauhaus, you know, even after a year, I feel like that there's a real presence of this sort of strange sea of humanity and a, and a different sort of perspective of, of what, how a person would generally photograph a crowd like this. It would be somebody that would be on the ground. Photographed by uh, Shomei Tamatsu. Um, you may, if you saw the For a New World to Come exhibition um, here at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston a few years ago, uh, this photograph was, was included in that. Um, the photograph from 1969 um, of a lone protester. Um, seems like there's nothing really in this photograph that's not moving. Sort of interesting to see you know, one isolated individual. Um, it was published in a book, um, also from '69, I think, um, called Ocean Juku. Um, and Tomatsu had spent a number of years making photographs of um, street scenes and, and things that were of interest to him. Um, and um, mostly in downtown Tokyo. So the way that this photograph appears in the publication like this. <clears throat> so there's a spread of the lone protester on the left uh, and then a group of, of uh, police officers or, or riot individual or riot gear or riot people on the, on the right. Uh, cover of the book. Uh, two photographs here um, from uh, Kazu Kitai, um, uh, students at a meeting uh, here. Uh, Kitai was uh, spent weeks on the inside of the of the university building um, with the student protesters that were um, organizing and protesting against um, the post-war occupation of Japan by U.S. troops, um, as well as, a, um, as you know, issues with the university as well and student rights and teachers' rights. And there was also a proposed visit of a, of a United States submarine um, to the bay as well, uh, that they were also protesting. 
though Kitai was on the inside um, making these photographs um, as, as a as a you know as a sort of peer, um, I think to these students. Again, grainy film. Um, in this photograph, uh, seems like there are water spots or, or you know problems in the emulsion of the film. Um, you know, issues that weren't of a concern or maybe something that was embraced um, as well. So in this photograph, there's a police force rushing in to, uh, into, to part of the university building, pushing back tables and things that the students had used as, as barricades. Uh, this is a book of key ties from 60, 1965. Um, also photographing earlier than that, um, protests and gatherings. Um, um, a couple of spreads from the book. And both of these books are part of the uh, Manfred Hiding book collection um, that are now here housed in the study center. So they're accessible with uh, photographs from the collection. Uh, this this is just a it's a something I found on the internet. <laughs> it's uh, just a uh, English language um, newspaper that was distributed in, in Japan. Featuring the protests. Uh, three photographs here um, by Yasuhiro Ishimoto, um, studied uh, in Chicago at the old New Bauhaus. Um, in the late or in the 60s, known as uh, Institute of Design, um, and so he had studied in the Institute of Design and made uh, photographs in Chicago, um, and then returned to Japan and and also photographed uh, the student protesters here, at the the Neon University. Considerably, I think, more formal and how he's approaching making the photographs. See the facade of the university building here. And this really, really seemingly careful, careful you know, composition while the students rush by. Uh, and lastly, in this section, um, a photograph by Gil Perez is part of his Telex Iran project and book. Photographing uh, these demonstrations um, that were in part um, involved with the U.S. Embassy um, in Tehran and the, and the hostages that were kept there. Um, Protest was one um, in support of uh, an individual that was looking to, to to move to remove the the hostages and to, um, to open the embassy. Uh, so now we're moving into the 60s and uh, squarely into the United States. Um, this photograph um, uh, by James Corrales from 1965. And this is the photographing the second attempt of the march from, um, from Selma to Montgomery. Um, so after the, the Bloody Sunday, um, attempt. So this march started uh, on the, uh, March 21st. Um, and so um, 
Carlos was you know, photographing these things for an assignment for Look Magazine. So a photograph by uh, Benedict J. Fernandez. Um, Fernandez was uh, was not initially start, there was, his position was not one initially of a photographer. He was a, worked a, as a crane operator in Hoboken, and but over the years uh, ended up photographing uh, Martin Luther King Jr. a number of times. And so in 1989. There was a portfolio published, and that's where this print comes from. So it was a portfolio that was, I think, published by the Eastman House uh, that gathered uh, Fernandez's images of Martin Luther King Jr. over the years. So and this is um, Dr. Benjamin Spock on the left, um, Martin Luther King Jr. in the middle, and then. Um, Monsignor Rice of Pittsburgh is a labor activist on the right there. Those gloves. So, and this is a it's a solidarity day parade on the United Nations in New York, um, 1967. Uh, two photographs. By Fred Baldwin, uh, one of the co-founders of PhotoFest, um, and somebody that um, in the 60s was using uh, his expertise and his um, abilities as a photographer to document um, parts of the civil rights movement. Um, this is these, both of these photographs are dated from 63 to 64. Um, so this is in Savannah, Georgia. A photograph of Isaiah Williams um, preaching at Wright Square in Savannah, Georgia, also Uh, a Danny Lyon photograph <clears throat> so from Birmingham, Alabama in 1963. Photograph of Eddie Brown uh, being arrested in 1962. A photograph uh, in Leesburg, Georgia, 1963, of uh, a group of young women that were arrested um, protesting and then sent uh, outside to a stockade, outside the city to a stockade. Um, and so this photograph was made when uh, Lyon found out about their detention um, and it snuck himself in a camera in to, to, to make these photographs. Um, that were later published um, in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee's um, newsletter um, and then distributed to other newspapers. And um, it was the distribution and the, you know, of these images and of this image that were, that were helpful in getting these women out. Uh, so. Cairo, Illinois, 1962. Uh, later, uh, at this time, uh, 
the student nonviolent student nonviolent coordinating committee uh, field secretary uh, John Lewis on the middle middle left. So, and then this photograph uh, by Lyon was later used um, as a on a on a poster by the by SNCC. Uh, a handful of photographs by Ernest Withers, uh, Memphis-based photographer. Um, this photograph uh, from '68, uh, infamous uh, sanitation worker strike. Junie and Briscoe of the Memphis NAACP protesting on Main Street, 1960. Uh, uh, August of 1961, William Edwin Jones. Uh, pushes his daughter Renee Andrunetta Jones during a protest march on Main Street. Uh, and then marching on. Uh, on Main Street in Memphis uh, after the assassination of um, of Dr. King in 1968. So the, the you know history's unfortunate footnote for these Withers photographs is that. <clears throat> um, I mean, within the last. Ten years or so, um, you know, there all this all this information came out about about Withers' involvement with the with the FBI um, and working with the um, FBI's COINTELPRO um, program, um, you know, and, and providing them with information um, and images and things like that um, that would you know, that could and likely were used against. Um, uh, Dr. King and, and others as well that were, were seeking to protest peacefully. Uh, Charles Moore photograph, um, police dog attack in Birmingham, 1963. So it's made in May of that year um, while protesters were marching through the streets of Birmingham. Um, the police department had sent uh, um, officers and, and, uh, and dogs out um, to disperse the, the protesters. And, you know, so what, what you know, this is obviously depicting is, is that. Um, a plug for the Menil collection. Uh, on view right now on the north side of the building on the Stool Ross entrance. Uh, there's a sculpture by Jamal Cyrus and uh, this uh, screen print by Andy Warhol that was based on one of uh, Moore's photographs.
So I just want to show two more two more photographs, uh, both vertical. Um, the first um, one that I've always been really strongly attracted to, <clears throat> but a uh, Danny Lyons photograph from 1963, the March on Washington. Another uh, Fred Baldwin picture uh, from, again, 63, 64, also in Savannah, Georgia, of uh, Benjamin Clark. Um, so it was 21, 22 at the time, um, and who was at the time uh, chairman of the youth division of the Chatham County uh, Crusade for Voters and spent uh, time uh, organizing and trying to get individuals registered to vote. Then um, there's an article I'll try to find a link to again, try to post it um, somewhere or distribute it uh, through Matt. But there's a, an article that he had um, written and published in uh, Freedom Ways, 1964. He talks about his work. Um, organizing voting drives um, and also against uh, you know, talking about police brutality um, at the time. Um, but it, let's see if I can find this thing to read. Um, so, this, so this is uh, Clark writing. Uh, we are a large minority in Savannah. Brutality is an everyday thing, and when it happens, it is usually so tragic that one cannot bear, uh, cannot help but remember. If a Negro is killed, his head is, uh, if his Negro is not killed, his head is beaten so he might as well just be dead. I knew a young fellow about 23 years old, Hardy James. One night, a group uh, decided to go down to a new restaurant that had opened, the Safari. Artie had some car trouble in front of the restaurant, and when Artie went into the restaurant, a policeman came up behind him and shot him. When he was shot, Artie threw his hands up and said, please don't kill me. And those were his last words. The Justice Department did send down a representative, but we never heard any more about it. So, uh, but... So this constitutes the sort of basis of the of the presentation, and this is a, a small small percentage of the, the photographs in the collection here that relate to protests and marches and demonstrations. Um, and certainly, this is also a small part of what the collection has that are related to civil rights um, images as well. And I'll. If you have questions, um, comments, concerns, et cetera, um, please feel free to reach out and email me um, jdibley at mfah.org. So thanks. I have been unmuted. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of, of everyone. Um, so looking at the uh, chat box, uh, let's, so guest said, wow, the lion stockade photo is amazing. The power of the photo to free the women in real art action. Uh, Kimono Lovingness, guest uh, withers working with the feds, bad art action. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like guest has a question. Uh, therein lies my question. Do the actions or politics of the artist matter in the case of protest photography? You know, um, sure. I, I mean, you know, I look at, you know, I mean, it, it, it just, 
feels automatically problematic as soon as you pick up a camera in a situation like that. Um, you know, and, and something that's a contemporary issue as well. Um, when people are photographing um, protests and actions and then immediately pushing those images and video to social media, um, I feel like that fast distribution of images, um, you know, that are, that are all of a sudden sort of in the public domain can be used by people in a way that, you know, the, that person that was capturing that footage, like, probably doesn't want to happen. But, you know, so I think like you know, being conscious of that <clears throat> as somebody that's there using a camera, um, you know, video or still photography, et cetera. You know, I mean, I think that that's, um, that's, a, that's a big liability, I think, for that person that's, that's making that work. Um, so, um, but <laughs> it, 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 I think it's easy to say, that you know, every everything is political, every action is political, you know, and certainly in this instance like this where you're you're inserting yourself and making these documents um, for whatever reason, whatever your intentions are, um, you know, somebody could use them for something else. Well, Jason, I have a question while people are thinking and feel free everyone um, to add a question into the chat box. As it, as it strikes you. Uh, Jason, what is the most current protest photo uh, in the museum's collection? Because we saw a lot of things dated, you know, decades ago. Do we, what, what's the most recent one? Anything from last last week? You know, for example, I know there's not. No, <laughs> no there, there aren't um, photographs in the collection. Um, you know, from from recent protests. So it's not the 1980s, 1990s. Oh, they're the Gil the Gil Perez photographs were from um, 79, 80. So then I'm going to push into the 90s. I would have to look at my PDF again. Okay. Um, Fair enough. Put me, put me on the spot, and I'll I'll. I'll <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm not doing that to you. Oh, I'm halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think this list is edited. I think I cut a lot of things out of this. I did. Sorry. Yeah, I don't have an immediate answer. <laughs> so. Okay. But certainly, yeah, I'm free to reach out. And I mean, if anyone's interested, I do have a, a large grouping of these uh, types of images that are saved and can access easily and make PDFs to distribute um, if you're interested in sort of seeing as far deep as I can dig at this point, um, you know, the, the types of protest and uh, demonstration march images that are in the collection. And this has been an ongoing pet project of yours for the last, what did you say, last couple of years, few years? Something like that. And it's ongoing. Is it ongoing? I, I was with a collection of 34,000 photographs, you know, I, I feel like I'm on top of things all the time. I feel like I'm constantly sort of like coming across new things. Um, I mean, you can search in different fields in the database and search for protest and demonstration and those sorts of things. But if, you know, if it's not, and there's not, there's a keywording project that's happening right now with the photography collection at the museum, and there's an individual that's keywording um, all of the photographs in the collection. So starting from the most recent accession and sort of working back. And so eventually you can search for protest or march or demonstration and all of those things will come up. You can search for, you know, things that are photographs that don't have protest or demonstration or march in the title. At some point in the near future, you'll be able to search for those things on the website and they'll come up. At this point now, you know, it's just sort of like I 
I know this photograph exists. It doesn't have protest in the title, but you just add it into this, what the, what the program calls an object package, which is, you know, selection of, you know, virtual records of, uh, collection objects. What a fun project. It's, it's an uncomfortable one. I mean, looking at, looking at those photographs and understanding, you know, sort of what they represent, um, and the, the, yeah, the, the strength that they have, I think, for sure is, um, I think it's, it's, I'm glad that it's sort of organizing them in some sort of a way, but, um, you know, so that people can access them. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's it's a tool. It's relevant. Sure, of course the, it is. The photos are, you know, decades old, but the situation isn't. <laughs> You know, it's ongoing. So I, I can see this being something you're dipping your nose into, you know, from here on out for sure. Okay, so I'm not seeing uh, any other questions in the chat. Uh, so I guess this is a, a good place to call it. Okay. So Jason, thank you so much. Thanks, thanks Matt for reaching out um, and to all the participants here. Um, you know, uh, please, you know, reach out and uh, find out more about the, you know, the photo books and the photographs that are in the museum's collections. I have a little, <laughs> I have a little, um, so because those things are, are accessible to the public. It's an amazing resource. The, the, the collection that you manage is an amazing resource uh, for everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So we will see everyone on a computer screen sometime soon. Jason, again, thank you so much. Good evening. All right, good night. Thanks.